What's good, everybody? Um, so I just got asked from my friend. His name is Alito Kea, aka the Hawaiian Blanca, to help him out with a whack my Olo segment. Now he's gonna probably cover New Year's Eve traditions, and he asked me specifically, "What do Filipinos that I grew up around, that I grew up around, do come New Year's Eve?" Now I grew up here in Hawaii. Um, I've had opportunities, yes, to travel to the other islands and um, to to many different places around the world in my youth. And one thing that is constant among every Filipino party is there's an always flowing supply of alcohol. There's always what we call polutan. In, in English, we call that pupus or appetizers. Or even if you want to get a little bit fancy with it, we call it an amuse-bouche, which is basically simple two bites that you have with your beer or your, or your mixer. On top of that, you, you have loved ones and friends surrounding you. That is one of the biggest things ever. A lot of the times when, when you think about it, many OFWs, meaning overseas Filipino workers, fly home to the Philippines to their country of origin, meaning they're the ka kabalik bayan, meaning they're the, they're the tourists, they're the foreigner in their land that they're working, to come home to celebrate the New Year's Eve with their family. Many Filipinos, not all Filipinos who work abroad, get that opportunity. But everywhere you go, aside from the fireworks from, to, the, to, the, to the OPM, which is the original Filipino music, to a lot of good food, um, generally speaking, is what we Westerners would consider our New Year's Eve tradition. Now, the Filipinos, we, we tweak that. Where Americans, we have barbecue, Tagalog, we have Tagalog, Ilocano, Visaya, um, Kapangasinan. We have what's called Kamayan. And what Kamayan is, is basically a full family-style buffet filled with every single comfort food that your area has to offer. Now, because you know, on my street, we have more Ilocano than there is Tagalog, um, there's still regional dishes in the Philippines that is represented in that dish. Like for, for me personally, one thing I love and what I understand is something that is from Cebu is, I had one neighbor who's from Cebu who's, a, who's Visayan, and he his mom made um, this one dish called Laeng, in Hawaii, we call that luau, luau hee. But in, in instead of putting squid, they use um what these little fish called, I think dilis, and it is so delicious. And it's it's basically this salted dried fish, or probably about an inch, maybe less than an inch, super thin. It looks like twigs, and they mix it in with the um the taro leaves, the the stewed and braised taro leaves. After so many hours, and it, it renders out so well. On top of that, we have what's called lechon. Um, the, the South U.S. mainland calls it barbecue pork. We call it lechon. And we, it's similar in the sense that it's pit roasted, but how it's served is completely different. Now, I don't know how Georgia, um, Louisiana, Virginia, Tennessee, Kansas City, Oklahoma. I don't know how you guys serve your barbecue up in the U.S. mainland, but the way we do it is whole hog, get your damn machete, get your damn knife, and cut that fucker open and enjoy the, the deliciousness that God has put right in front of you. <laughs> and that's one of the things too. And on top of that, we don't have plates. We don't use plates in, in the Philippines. We, we have literally banana leaf food <laughs> on the table. And that's that's all it is when it comes to our food food traditions. Now, it will not be a Filipino party, and I know I've, I've touched based on this earlier. If there wasn't any karaoke or karaoke, and you and you, the general thing that you will hear is um, past old Christmas songs. Um, very few Filipinos will sing Haryana, which is basically a kind of folk music. Um, growing up, I heard um, there are some karaoke renditions of these folk music, but it's never as good as when you go home to the Philippines. There's something so beautiful about hearing a tenor guitar and a, a soprano bass guitar playing that sweet music of the homeland kind of deal. 
it's kind of like hearing the ukulele and the the gourd, the the percussion gourd that they hear that you hear at the Merry Monarch Festival, where it's that synergy of music, those those notes that are being played that take you back to a simpler time before technology, before all of the negativity, all of the bullshit that happened in 2016. It takes you back, and for me, I only experienced that once, and I was really young. I I remember we, my mom, dad, and my brother, we took a family trip to the Philippines. Um, I forgot what the occasion was, but I knew it was during New Year's Eve. Unfortunately, though, I had a severe bout of pneumonia when I was in the Philippines, but that cleared up just before New Year's Day. And my dad's friend at the time noticed that we weren't there celebrating. So what he did was he brought the band that played the art, um... Haryana, I'm not. I'm not too sure if I, I'm pronouncing it right. So please excuse me if I if I butcher it. But it's a. They played that folk music in my um, in my room, when we were then when they were gonna discharge us because we were leaving about three days after New Year's Eve, and it was so beautiful. The music notes were so crisp. The vocals were were harmonistic, if that's even a word, and that's for me traditionally what a Filipino New Year's looks like. Um, we have that here in Hawaii and a lot of times too you have aunties and uncles there that will pour alcohol down your gullet and For me, I don't want to be rude So I say yes uncle yes auntie or if a brother or sister offers me a drink a green bottle I pop them open suck them back. That's it um, But in regards to that kind of etiquette if an auntie and uncle tries to stuff food down your gullet accept it because they worked hard literally the whole day. And what a traditional Filipino New Year's celebration starts with is it starts at exactly 12 noon and ends past midnight. And that's also the same for tradition in for Christmas is they start at an ungodly hour, which is around, for some families, it's five o'clock in the morning and ends all the way noon on New Year's Day. Now, a lot of families, they have this messed up tradition where if you pass the hell out, you're doing chores. You're cleaning up the whole house and they literally, from what my mom, the stories that my mom told me about from her growing up in the Philippines, being raised in the Philippines and celebrating Christmas all throughout her adulthood there, is if you pass out, they will make an ungodly mess. Like, my room right now is pretty fucking messy. But, from what my mom told me, and I hope this is an exaggeration, they will make an ungodly mess that you will have to clean before New Year's Eve. And for me, that just brought me back to when, like literally just hearing the story, my mom's stories about her New Year's Eve in the Philippines before she met my dad. It, it literally made me appreciate that I don't have family here in the sense that they don't come to my house and they don't make an ungodly mess because I know for a fact that if I if I drink more than four shots of, of vodka or t five shots of tequila, I am out. Like Kenny, Remy, Remy Ma, Remy, Remy, whatever that freaking 1738 bullshit is, I can handle that. Crown, I can handle that. But vodka, tequila, and a combination of Heineken, done. Make, make die dead, kanak, major, <laughs> all that stuff. And also too, it's like if you get drunk, um, a lot of the a lot of the time I remember too, it's like one time I spent it with um, a friend in, in Kalihi. A lot of times if you're drunk, they will beat your ass if you even think of touching your keys. And while yes, while yes, they, they want you to drive home, be home safe, they would rather you get home hungover than drunk. And even at that, the times that I got drunk in Kalihi on New Year's Eve, um, I always remember um, them before I even have a sip of beer. They say, Anak, let's call your mom first. So they have the old school phones with the speakers. They dial my phone and they would, they would talk to my mom in Tagalog saying that he's going to be sleeping over. There will be alcohol flowing. Um, he's gonna be we want him to get home safe so he's gonna be staying over 
And that was cold from my mom when I turned, I think, 15 or 16 that I was going to be drinking. So my mom and dad know that I drink and they know that I smoke. But they know also that I have friends that don't enable me. And I think also, too, in, as a part of the Filipino culture, they encourage you to spend time with all of your loved ones, ever encompassing. That's why a lot of times if you have family spread throughout the United States or spread throughout the Philippines in this case, they try to make the, they try to make the, 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 the pilgrimage back home. Whether they, if they're in Dubai, whether they're if whether they're in Saudi Arabia, whether they're in America, um, American Samoa, what have you, they try to make the pilgrimage back to to spend time with their family, and even if it's like last minute plans, from what I understand, growing up, if you're there before New Year's Day. It's already a great blessing that you're getting. So that 11-minute rant or that 11-minute breakdown of what it is to be a Filipino come New Year's Eve, New Year's Day is my segment. Hopefully, you guys catch Alika Kea, the Hawaiian Blanca, Facebook, Wak My Olo Wednesdays.